What up everybody, welcome to Sounds and Sights with your host, Nick Signs. Today we're learning one of my favorite techniques to start writing songs, a modified version of a technique called object writing. Let's get into it. What is object writing? The original concept of object writing involves taking a single object, writing about it using your senses for 10 minutes and 10 minutes only. There's plenty of documentation around this particular version of object writing, which I'll put down in the description. For the modified version that I use to write songs, we're gonna change a few key points. The first, instead of using a singular object, we're gonna use any random word. And then the second, instead of using only our senses, we're gonna add a few different dimensions to be able to expand upon our word and create the little building blocks that we're gonna to use to create our song. So let's break it down. Single random word or object. This is our starting point. Some artists prefer to work from a completely blank slate I personally like to start with something to latch onto. So there are plenty of tools to help you find a random word. Randomwordgenerator.com, take an actual physical dictionary and literally just open it up and find a random page and plop, see what happens. So we have our random word. Now we're going to capture our gut thought. What is a gut thought? I believe there's this special little moment that happens when you see or read something for the very first time. In our case, our random word. This completely automatic subconscious thought that pops up. For the first part of the writing exercise, I want you to pay extra special attention to that first thought. It might be an image. It might be a vivid memory. It might be a thought of another person. Whatever it is, write it down and capture it in as much detail as you can. For example, as I was writing this out, I did it myself. I went on randomwordgenerator.com and I got the word use. The very first thing that popped into my head was use, like you use somebody in a manipulation context. Very negative. Using somebody or something and then completely moving on. So that was my first thought. And honestly, your first thought may surprise you. Heck, it might even scare you. But the goal is to be an unbiased observer. So write down this gut thought in as much detail as you possibly can, even if it's entirely unrelated to the word. So the second little exercise that we're going to do is what I like to call interview time. Take that initial gut thought, if it was an image, a memory, a sound, and start asking yourself these curious questions about it. If it helps you visualize what this dialogue should sound like, imagine yourself as a five-year-old asking yourself those questions where no question is off limits or too dumb to ask. It'll take practice, but these questions are the most helpful when they come from a place of genuine curiosity and not self-judgment. For example, for the word use above, the self-conscious version of myself might have asked, why do I always jump to the negative connotation of things? Are people gonna think that I'm negative or that I use people? There's no way that I'm writing this down. But instead, by tapping into the most genuinely curious part of myself, we get questions that sound a little bit more like this. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder why my first instinct of the word use was inherently negative. If I experienced the feeling of being used, how did that affect me? How did it make me feel? Would I be different today if I hadn't experienced that? So by allowing ourselves to not be so judgmental and opening up that genuinely curious side, it allows us to kind of follow this train of thought that otherwise would have been blocked off by our self-doubt or self-conscious thoughts. And I'm not perfect either. I've personally caught myself a few times not wanting to write things down because I would have a thought and be like, oh my God, if anyone actually read this, they would think I'm crazy. So this is probably going to happen to you too. What I suggest is this, acknowledge that urge. Go into this knowing that the reflex to not be embarrassed is very instinctual and is human. But here's the thing, as artists, we have a choice how much we listen to that instinct. For the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to ask you to ignore it completely. In fact, I'll go one step further and say that if there was a thought that you second guessed, it's even more important that you write it down because that means you're really onto something. So writing all this down isn't just helpful for building the emotional story blocks for what might later become a song. It actually helps to sit with our feelings, to sit with our thoughts for more than the usual five seconds that we think of anything at any one time and really sit with it. Personally, through this exercise, I've had more important moments of reflection or realization 
than anything else that I've really done. Freeform association. It's only natural that at some point you're going to feel your thoughts start to slow down. When you feel that start to happen, keep going with it, but before you hit a full-on roadblock, I want to suggest trying this. Use what you already have and expand upon it. One tool that I've leaned on heavily for songwriting and for this exercise in particular is a thesaurus. Sounds nerdy as hell, but it works. Sometimes it's really easy to get trapped into using the same words, the same ways of describing things, and those words become familiar and uninspiring. But the beauty of our language is that no one word is exactly the same, even if on the surface they mean the same thing. Each synonym has nuances, has a different flavor that can help change the vibe ever so slightly or in a major way. For example, angry, pretty blanket term, is different from irate, it's different from frustrated, it's different from flustered, which is different from exasperated. Also, all of these words have different syllable structures and they also have different ends, which means that they're gonna rhyme with different stuff. So you could essentially be saying the same thing, but now instead of one avenue, you now have five or six different rhyming schemes potentially to use, syllable structures to use, and you open yourself up to a whole new world of what your song might evolve into, which is awesome. Rhyme schemes. If you find yourself writing any key words, any words that pop out, pull them out of the mix and start writing words that rhyme with them. Jot down just the first few that come to your mind naturally until you kind of reach a roadblock. Go a little bit further, push yourself a little bit more, and then after you've kind of exhausted all of your natural options, use something like a rhyming dictionary. I personally use the near rhymes feature a lot to figure out ways to bend different words to be able to rhyme what I'm looking to rhyme. Eminem is a great example of somebody that takes words and bends the syllables to be able to match other words. You'll find that if you can start practicing this and improving your skill in bending words, you'll open up your songwriting vocabulary because now you'll have access to words in your rhyming scheme that you wouldn't have otherwise had access to. 10 minutes and 10 minutes only. Everyone gets busy, but 10 minutes is small enough that anyone can commit. Things are easier to commit to and complete if you know how to plan it. And 10 minutes is pretty easy to plan. One of the most common questions I get about this 10 minutes is, if you're in the middle of a good idea when the 10 minute timer goes off, do you keep going or do you stop? My suggestion to you would be stop no matter what. Stopping in the middle of a great idea might sound painful at first, and it might feel painful. You might feel afraid that if you stop in the middle of this creative rush, then you'll never get it back again. But here's the magic. After doing this over and over and over again, you start to realize that it does come back. There's a powerful freedom that comes from the realization that you have an infinite pool of creativity to draw from. There's nobody nobody that shows up for their creativity every day and loses it. On September 3rd, 2012, I lost my creativity. That doesn't happen. You might have days where it comes easier, you might have days where it's more difficult, but it's always there for you. This realization will take time and only really comes through doing it yourself. I can tell you you're an infinite fountain of creativity, but you won't really know for certain until you create consistently and see the results for yourself. But once you have this beautiful realization, in practice, it takes some of the pressure off because you know more creativity is right around the corner. And as I'm sure you've noticed, when the pressure is off, that's when the most creative ideas come. The other reason why I would suggest stopping at 10 minutes always on the dot is that it keeps the excitement. Our brains are pretty well trained to move towards pleasure and away from pain. If you keep writing until you've completely tapped yourself out energy-wise and you're exhausted, you're irritated, it's only a matter of time before you, your brain, and your soul starts to catch on and not want to do that thing anymore. If you stop at that 10 minute mark when you're on a roll and you feel inspired and you feel excited, that will be the last thing that you remember from this writing session. So not only do you leave the court on a swoosh for the next time, you're even that much more excited to get back to the writing pad 
because you're excited for what you're capable of. That's what keeps you coming back the next day and the next day and the next day. That's how you become an awesome songwriter. Why would you object write? So aside from the obvious benefit of creating song blocks for you to use later, why else would you spend 10 minutes writing like this? One of the biggest reasons is repeatability. It isn't a marathon writing session. You don't have to plan your whole day around it. It's 10 minutes. And as a 10 minute session, it's something you can pretty easily make a habit out of. And as we all know, great songwriting comes from writing a lot of songs. So being able to create a habit out of just writing is key. Another side reason to that is the creative hygiene of practicing writing when you're not inspired. The reality is we're not gonna feel inspired every minute of every day, but more often than not, the inspiration comes in the middle of us just showing up and doing it. The hardest part is starting. So picking a word, picking an object, and just starting to get the wheels turning, starting to write, showing up for yourself in front of the pad, or your, or your notes on your phone is the easiest entryway into getting the ball rolling. When should you object write? This technique is really best done as a recurring habit. So it doesn't matter exactly when in the day that you do it, so long as you just do it. The original author of this concept, Pat Pattison, suggested doing it first thing in the morning. And in general, I would agree with that. I've always personally just been an advocate for getting the creative juices flowing as early in the day as possible to let your brain expand on that idea naturally throughout the course of the day. But really, any time. So who would benefit the most from this exercise? Somebody who benefits from a little structure, being an artist can be a wildly unstructured experience, which can be very freeing, but for some people, it can also be paralyzing. Having a routine where you know you can go from nothing to something is really what makes this one of the old reliable techniques that I've used for years. Another artist that might benefit from this exercise specifically is somebody that prefers working off of an existing idea and expanding it versus going from absolutely nothing to somehow just creating something. And there's no shame in this. There's no right way to do any of this. I've been writing for a while, and personally, I just prefer to start with an idea and expand upon it. That's where I find the joy. That's where I find the creativity and the inspiration to really hit me the most. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I genuinely hope that you can use this technique to start writing your next favorite song. As always, if you like this video or want to hear more, like the video itself and subscribe to my channel to hear more. Any links or outside parties that I might have mentioned throughout the video, any links will be down in the description below, in addition to some links for the music that I make myself as Nick Signs, the human being. But anyway, thank you so much, and I really, really hope that this technique works for you as well as it's worked for me writing pretty much all of my songs over the past three years. So until next time, rock on.